Good afternoon, everyone. You see a big smile on my face today because I'm really excited about today's guest. And I want to ask you this question. You know I like to ask you a lot of questions. The question I want to ask you today is, do you have a mentor? Have you thought about having a mentor on your journey of entrepreneurship? I had several mentors, and my guest today actually is a mentor. She runs a mentorship program in her real estate business. And we're going to talk about that. This is Yvonne DeVita. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're watching Smart Woman Conversations on Nurturing Big Ideas today. And my guest is Janet Borscher. And she has just one of the biggest smiles. And she has one of the best personalities for the business that she's in. Her business is real estate. Janet, welcome to Smart Woman Conversations today. Hello, good to see you. Janet and I, by the way, worked together and not to work together, but she helped us buy about six, seven, I don't know, eight or 10 houses. How many well, houses? Like <laughs> it seemed that many, didn't it, Janet? Right. We bought several houses and Janet was our go-to gal. Let me tell you a little bit about Janet. Janet has been a resident of Boulder County since 1976. So that's since before Chloe was born, Janet. Yeah. <laughs> Chloe was my daughter and introduced me to Janet. She attended University of Colorado. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Communication Disorders and Psychology. She then completed her, her master's degree at the University of Colorado in Speech Language Pathology. That's very, very interesting. We should talk a little bit about that, Janet. Yeah, we should. Uh, she comes from a real estate family that has served Boulder County for over 40 years. And she's been a realtor with WK Real Estate since 2001. She's a member of the National Association of Realtors, the Colorado Association of Realtors, the Boulder Board of Realtors, and the Council of Certified Residential Specialists. She specializes in residential real estate in Boulder County, Broomfield County, parts of Weld, Jefferson, and Adams County. And her goal is to provide the absolute highest quality of professional professionalism <laughs> and integrity to the real estate industry, which you do, Janet, you absolutely do. But I want to talk about your mentorship program. So okay. you've mentioned this to me in the past, and it's very intriguing because I don't think enough women, especially, think about getting a mentor when they want to go out and start a business. Right. How did your WK um, Realty decide to start a mentorship program, or was it your idea? Um, so in real estate, in the state of Colorado, for the first two years, you have to have your broker attend the closing with you. And so our broker was doing that, and he was running the business, and he was just doing a lot of stuff around the office. And so I volunteered probably 10 years ago to start helping. And I said, you know, I'll help train these people and I can go to their closings with them. And so it just started with one or two people. And now I usually I mentor about four to five people a year. So it's really, and now everybody just calls me mama bear at the office. Cause I, <laughs> I run that program. And anytime somebody new comes in, they don't even ask anymore. They just hand that person off to me. So, so I love doing What does it mean though, to um, be a mentor? In, in the real estate. So you go to the closings with them. First, maybe we should have just a minute or two to talk about the fact that not every state does realty, um, real estate sales the same. And we learned that when we moved from, from New York to Colorado when you taught us. Right. Um, so when you mentor them, you're actually mentoring them through far more than real estate agents here have to do because real estate agents here end up getting a lawyer to do a lot of what you exactly. do. Yeah. So we start all the way from how to get clients, how to respond to your clients, how to show property. And then we write all the contracts. We have an 18 page contract. We have at least 10 required forms that we fill out that the um, Colorado board sets up the contracts. And then we just have to, you know, you have to know how to fill them out. So we're not practicing law, but we definitely, there's no lawyers. Very rarely somebody gets a lawyer here unless something has happened that's caused a problem. And then we go all the way through the inspections, the appraisals, 
So there's a, there's a lot to it that people don't realize. And when they, you know, it's, people think, oh, it's just showing houses. And right. that, that's the smallest part of it. Right. Right. I mean, there, and this is another thing is um, in the industry you're in, customer service is probably one of the really most important things. We all talk yeah. customer service all the time. I tell my new business owners, your customer service is going to make you or break you. Exactly. But the reality is, I could start, let's say, um, an online business and my customer service is email and that's got to be important, but you're face to face with people. So earlier I said you had a really big smile. Well, you do. And it's one of the things that whenever we see you, there's Janet with her big smile. Right. <laughs> um, because yeah. you're, you're not there just to show them the house and say, isn't this perfect? You're there to answer the questions and all of, talk about that because you do really embody, I think, the concept of customer service. Yeah. Well, and, you know, realist buying or moving is the, the equivalent stress level of dying or getting a divorce, death or divorce. And so you have to really be empathetic to the people that you're working with and know what they're going through. And, you know, you're every, I tell everybody when they start the business, you really have to have your why or you're not going to make it. And my why in the business is I know that I'm changing people's lives. And so I absolutely, every morning I get up because I'm wondering who I'm going to be able to help today and what I'm going to get achieved for them. And so you definitely, I mean, you can't be in this business for yourself and you mm -hmm, can't be mm -hmm. in this business to make money. You have to be in this business to help people. And um, it, it's just, every of them thinks, oh, it's so fun to show houses. And that's, that's not it. It's helping people. Well, right. And it, it is, but yeah, but it's definitely... Well, you know, you have to guide people through every step of the way. And if you're not there for it, you're going to miss deadlines and they don't know what's going on. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always tell people that I'm mentoring, if they call me, I failed. You need to be the one getting all the information to them mm -hmm. so that they're not wondering what's going on. So, you know, you have to have a lot of systems, how to communicate with people. You have schedules, your calendars, and you just have to, mm -hmm. you know, do what you say. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think that we look at today, we, we depend sometimes too much on technology. Right. And it's all well and good to email each other or to text. I mean, texting is the big new thing. That, right. that, that's great. The young kids like to do that more than, than they do. And sometimes I text because uh, I don't like to talk on the phone. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the reality is, even the phone, I mean, the phone is maybe one of the steps. I really believe when you're a real estate agent, and I learned this, I think, from you, you need to be looking at the bigger picture. Because um, I'll tell you, folks, Tom and I could find 100 houses that we loved. And we would depend on you to say to us, you know, this whole group over here is not for you. I know what you like, and I know because we've worked together because you told me these look good online, but they're not for you. Right, right. And that's really important is to, you know, everyone says, you know, when you're in sales, people think you're trying to sell houses all the time. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people out of houses. You know, we'll walk in and I'm like, nope, nope. And they're like, okay, Janet says, no, let's go. So there's just, there's so much to it. And I tell all my clients too, that it's like I'm buying the house as well, because every house that you bought, you sell. And I want to be the person to sell it. So I'm not going to sell your house and then come over and say, oh, you've got a problem. You know, the location's bad. So when I'm buying it with you, I'm buying it for myself because I know I'm going to sell it someday. So it's really important to have that eye for your clients and say, you know, I wouldn't buy this. So why should you? Right, um, right. So for the mentorship program, what do the new... Um, real estate agents ask for you the most? What, what are some of the questions that they bring to you? Um, you know, they're, they kind of, they come in and they're really surprised by how much there is to do. Um, the main question they ask is, how do I get clients? Um, you know, because you have to, yeah, yeah. everybody knows seven to 10 realtors. So you really have to make yourself stand out and you have to, um, you know, the biggest thing, what we do, it's called a ninja program. And it means that you are really kind of 
you're never in the office because you're always out and about. And you know that about me. I mean, I'm always yep. anywhere I'm invited, any happy hours, coffees, lunches, parties. Um, you just really have to be, we call it in the flow with people. Mm -hmm. And anybody that knows you, likes you, and trusts you is going to use you as their agent. And so right. it's important to always be out and interacting with people. So that's, you know, the first thing that we teach people. And then then we work on the contracts a lot because you really need to know the contracts backwards and forwards. And that way, when you, you're putting something under, you can go over it with your clients and really. Well, that makes me wonder, do you have continuing education then? Do you have to oh, yeah. learn more new stuff? Do the laws change or the requirements? Mm -hmm. and yep. Yeah. So we have to have 24 hours every three years to mm -hmm. keep our licenses. And we have to do an update course every year. Um, but I have far more than that because it's, I mean, anytime there's something new coming up and in Colorado, we're kind of like, especially in Boulder County, they put us in charge, like the septic program. They, it's called the septic smart program. And we have to, we're like the police of the septic. We can't sell a house unless we've gone through the whole septic smart program. And so there's a lot of things that we're in charge of to make sure that everybody's following the rules. So we definitely you have to take water, right? Classes. A um, lot of, so there is a lot of education, but it is required to take mm -hmm. up to eight so, hours a year. So for, let's say an empty nester. Uh -huh. um, and, then, and then I want to talk about someone right out of college maybe, but for an empty nester who is looking to do something with her life because she doesn't want to sit home and watch soap operas all day. Right. Um, you know, why are there still soap operas on TV? I guess I don't understand. But anyway. <laughs> Sorry, someone just came to my office. That's all right. People have hello. been Hello, someone. I'm like, I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the dog comes in, sometimes the grandkids come in. Right, exactly. <laughs> but um, what kind of advice would you give someone who has this like big idea of, gee, I'll become a real estate agent because I love looking at houses online. I, I love talking to people and, you know, I'll make lots of money at it because I can show all the, look at this $500,000 house and I can make a commission on it. So what do you say to people who come in with this little bit of a big idea that might not be quite right? Right. So what I've done before, I have a lot of um, women that come to me and say that, and I can always use help at the office because I'm always busy. Mm -hmm. So I tell them to come and shadow me for a month or two and see what it's really about. And then if they like it, then go through the trouble of getting your license. And, um, you know, because I've had some that make it a week and they're like, there's no way I can do this. And they're, mm -hmm. they're just praised by it. And then there's other people that come in and absolutely love it. And I can tell usually within a couple of days if they're going to make it or not. And so then you can go and get your license. But it's, you know, you can, some people manage to do the business part time. Um, it just depends on how much you want to make, how much you want to, what you want to do, what your goals are. And so we do, you know, it's the 80-20% rule. There's 20% mm -hmm. of the people that do all the business and then the other 80% are in sometimes and so it is something that you can dabble in but it's um also something that you can make a career for a very long time so, right and it can be very rewarding right but it requires the work the and work. as any entrepreneurial venture does it requires the work and so i like what i'm hearing from you because there's um necessary steps in any business that you're starting that you are going to be quote unquote the boss i mean you're in um a bigger group so in some ways you're not the boss i, I tell me how, what that means because i don't think i've ever really understood that right we work for a broker we work for a broker so we're self-employed but we have to hang our license is what we call it we have to hang our license somewhere and you have to have a broker and the broker is in tr like if we get in trouble the broker can get in trouble so that's why i'm mentoring the people because you don't want to just send somebody out on the street that doesn't know what they're doing so i have to review all the contracts with them and make sure what they're doing is correct because it protects the broker so we don't get like health insurance or 401ks or anything like that and we actually pay our company to work here 
So we have an amount that we have to pay every year to be here. But you have the, our company is wonderful because we have really close knit people. It's like a family and you can ask people for help all the time. And we have classes here. They provide the office space or do you pay for that? We pay for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have some people that are mobile agents that pay less and then other people that have an office here that pay. Um, so it's really not a cheap job. You have to. Right. But, but it's an investment and with your mentorship program, you can then kind of, I don't like to say it this way, but it makes sense to weed out the people that aren't really serious. Um, right. And as far as the part time, um, can you do it part time, even being part of a broker? Yes. Like you are? Yeah. And, you know, some of the people that do it part time, I recommend they go with a team because that sometimes is nice because if you have. You know, if you want to go on a trip, you have people that are covering your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want a day off, you have people that are covering your business. And people know when they hire a team that they may not always be talking to you. So um, that's what I recommend if somebody doesn't want to do it all the time. So, just... so a big deal about the business you're in, and it really, I want, I want people watching to understand, it relates in some shape or form to almost all solopreneur businesses. Um, is that while you can sort of pick your hours, I mean, you've been in it long enough and you're established enough that you know where to pick and choose the times that you can or want right. to work or, or you want to go away. But in the end, in your business, Janet, you, you need to be available in the evenings, on weekends. I mean, if I, if I find a house suddenly online, I call you up and say, can we go see this house? And the only available opening is five o'clock. You're not going to call me back and say, no, I got to go home and cook dinner for my kids. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, so when yeah. do you get off? <laughs> well, we don't. <laughs> so <laughs> what I learned to do pretty early on in the business, and I tell people this too, is I was missing my kids' soccer games and I was missing things and it was making me really sad. And so finally I was like, I'm in charge of my schedule. So I would put down the kids' soccer game and when people would say, can we look at a house Saturday? I'm like, yes, but I have an appointment at nine. And I didn't say it was my kids' soccer game, but I would start writing personal things in as if it was an appointment to the point now that my kids, 20 years later, when I say I have an appointment, they're like, well, where are you really going? Because <laughs> oh, it might be some more fun. <laughs> so but that makes I, so much sense. Yeah, so I just schedule those things now so that, I mean, it's the same as if you call a dentist or a doctor and you mm -hmm. wanna go at nine, but they can't get you in until one, and you're like, okay, great, I can make it at one. And so, you know, we do have some agents in our office with young kids and they're really, strict with their clients and they say I don't take calls after eight mm -hmm. um, at night and so it's how you set it up with them in the beginning and just set up the expectations um, and that's perfect because I, I someone many years ago I can't remember I just remember wanting to make an appointment at a certain time and the person couldn't accommodate that and I thought why not? I mean, you're a solopreneur. You should want this business. And so I asked them because we were actually friends. Right. And the person, I can't I think it was a woman. And she said, look, I'm just like a hairdresser. You, you can't get an appointment with me if I have something else scheduled. Exactly. That's how it works. And so I really took, and that's what you're saying. You, so you're in charge of your schedule. And so within any uh, business, you make the schedule and you have appointments or business hours or whatever they are right um, they need to be do they need to be now I think they can be more flexible for for you than for someone who is selling product for instance and has the store hours I mean I need to know right. the store is open this day's a week and this exactly. time but for you you're a little bit more flexible do you prefer working Mornings or afternoons? Um, I work both, but I prefer in the morning. I always come in the office first thing in the morning. So I'm always here at eight. And then I like to set my appointments up in the afternoon. Um, it just it keeps you from running back and forth all day. So I try to do, um, 
mornings at the office, get all the paperwork in order, and then head out in the afternoon. And I try to line up all my appointments so that I kind of do a circle and then I end up at home in the evening. And then when I get home at night, then I wrap things up at home. So that's, so that's how I prefer. And that's good. And I'm sure that you help guide other new real estate agents to do something similar according right. to what they yeah. need to have done. So to your but point, very important. you have to have your systems down. And so yes. if you don't set, you know, I schedule those times that I'm going to do my paperwork now, I'm going to do my phone calls now, I'm going to send out thank you cards now. Um, and of course, you have to switch that up sometimes if it's the person's only time that they can see you. But right. Uh, you know, right. but most of the time I'm here right at eight and then around 12 or one, I'm out of here and I'm running around the rest of the afternoon. So. so we mentioned in your bio that you come from a family of real estate agents, right. but that isn't what you studied in college. No. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so while I was in college, I was actually an assistant at a Remax in town. And that was when there was a lot of foreclosures in Colorado. And so I ran the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac department while I was in college. And then I went down and started working with stroke patients when I got my master's and did barium swallows all day. And everybody was either dying or going home. And I was like, well, this is great. It's rewarding work. But in real estate, when I'm done selling them a house, I can still hang out with them and I still see them. And so I literally worked seven years to the day when I paid off my student loans, I quit. And in the meantime, I was getting my license. And so I went back into real estate as soon as I could. And it was for the relationships. I just really like the people and seeing them, you know, I mean, you're, you're my friend and I can see you. All I know, the exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that it's important for people to understand that you decided to do this not because you had your mother did it or your right. grandmother did it. You're, you're doing this because it's something you discovered you enjoy. And that's a big thing I try to get people to understand is you shouldn't be building a business that you don't enjoy doing. Absolutely. Yep. It has to be your passion. And I tell people that all the time. I mean, you have to want to get up in the morning and mm -hmm. you have to be excited about the day. And especially in this business, because there's so many ups and downs in this business and you, what I love about it is you have no idea what your day is going to look like and every deal is so different. And so, but you have to, you have to love it or you, you would never put in the hours. And what's funny is when my, when I was growing up, I always swore I wasn't going to be in real estate because my mom worked all the time. I'm like, I'm never going to do it. And then I was like, Oh wait, I want to do it. <laughs> I kind of like it now yeah. that I've grown up. I mean, yeah. that's really, I, I wish my nine year old granddaughter was here because she just, like like all young children she's just sure about everything and this is what she's going to do and this is what's going to happen and grandma tries to say might not happen that way frankly right. oh yes it will grandma <laughs> okay but we we all did that i mean we, right. we were going to be this or that um some of us did grow up and become what we we had dreamed about but sometimes you need to learn sometimes you need to take a path that is less let's say straight and narrow and, and take a wider road and maybe stop for a while and go off this way. And I've talked about that in, in a couple of other um, conversations too, because the more you learn about the things you like as you grow up, the more likely you are to discover what could be that business for you. So we're coming close to the end here and as far as being in business for yourself, mm -hmm. we've talked about the ins and outs and, and the processes and the things about being a real estate agent. But let's step aside now and let's look at the business itself. And now you go home, you have to file your own taxes. You have to do all the kinds of things that go along with being in business. Um, so what do you recommend people especially let's say we, we were going to talk about like young women out of college perhaps wanting to become real right. estate agents um the business processes is where i'm going i want women to understand you have to be a bookkeeper or hire one you have to be a business planner or hire one you have to do these things it's not something that you graduate with and you know it's not something that you um 
oh, I, I'm artistic and I'm going to create quilts and sell them, that's great. You, you don't know what that means. Right. I mean, because you're running a business. You're running a business. Yeah. And I mean, it, it has changed me. I look back at who I was when I started this business and who I am now, and I'm not even the same person. I mean, I'm, you know, what you learn and you grow and you become so strong and you, your knowledge and it's, it's so empowering. I mean, it's just wonderful to, to go through that. And that's why you need a mentor to say, okay, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the first year in my business, I had nobody telling me that I was going to have to pay all these taxes. So I'm just out spending all my money and then tax time comes and I was like, oh, this isn't good. <laughs> so you need somebody who's saying, you know, this is great, but this is how you need to progress and and so that's why i love to mentor people is it i would have loved to have that and yes you yes. know i mean so, it, so here's how we do this business but by the way here's how to be in business exactly yeah. exactly so yeah. i want to i want to share one story before we have to go and it's a story about a young couple that you know who were traveling and wanted to buy a house. And they bought a house unseen. Talk yep. about that story. <laughs> well, and actually, if you look in the background, that's the photo they gave, they got me at the Key West house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're Hemingway talking about my daughter and son-in-law. Yeah, so they the signed the contract while they were in the Hemingway house. And so <laughs> they bought me that while they were there and it's on my wall in my office. Um, I've done that a lot, actually, because like you said, I get to know my clients so well that when something comes on the market and our market is so hot, that when something comes on and if they can't make it, I race out. And now it's easier because now we have FaceTime so I can walk mm -hmm. through the phone. And exactly. But with your daughter, nope. <laughs> I just went over and called them and said, this is absolutely perfect. You guys have to do it. And they trusted me and it's, it was absolutely perfect. It so was, and they're still there, and so closing. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, we but, we talk about that a lot. How they bought a house unseen. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, but but really, and that's the truth of the matter is, you have established yourself over your eighteen years um, as someone that we can trust and we do know, and that's right. what most people. I want the women and the, and any men who are watching to understand that if you're starting a business and you want to become an entrepreneur, I'm here to help you. But the reality is after the, the learning of the kind of business, after the business processes and being in business, look at the bigger picture and to Janet's point earlier, what is your why? Right. What is your why? And the other thing I tell people all the time too is everyone's always like, oh, when I get there, I'll be great when i make this much money i'll be great this and everybody's always trying to get there there is no there you're here you're here at this moment so yeah. enjoy the moment enjoy the day and yes. we don't know where there is so there just, is no there i love it there's no there you're here so yeah. I'm like just be in the moment be where you're at be with the people you're with and enjoy the day and whatever is supposed to happen happens and You'll never get there because there's no there. Because when you get there, you make a new there. So yeah, yeah exactly. It's it's yeah. like uh, so, you know, yeah. There is no tomorrow because when you get there, it's today. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Like, so just be here. Today and, is the day to think about. Exactly. And yeah. enjoy. I mean, enjoy. as you say, today's the day that you should enjoy, and you should be getting up, answering the why, and being happy that you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. Exactly. Yep. Wonderful. Wonderful. So Janet, this has been perfect. I can't wait to share this with everyone. And you know, I miss you so much, but I know I miss you. We hope to be back um sometime and maybe in the spring or something and we'll definitely get together when we right. do. Or I'll come visit you in New York. <laughs> oh, I wish. Come that would be nice. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Well, great to see you. Yep, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.